This video was sponsored by Squarespace. Squarespace is an all-in-one platform to build your online store, website, and more. Hey everybody, it's Lavender Town. Today I'm continuing my series where I turn random stuff into cute character designs, and today my inspiration is Generations. So the character I'm starting out with is based on Gen Z. Gen Z is defined by birth years between 1995 or 1997, depending on who you ask, and 2010 or 2012. Older than that, you're considered a millennial, and younger than that, you're considered Gen Alpha. As for Gen Z's traits, there's good news and bad news. Gen Z has been described as a more educated, well-behaved, stressed, and depressed generation compared to the generations before them. So generally high achievers, but not doing so great mentally. So the first things I had to establish with her are like, what's her body type going to be like and what's she going to be wearing? Plaid mini skirts with a petticoat underneath, as well as thigh highs and um, crop tops with like any high-waisted bottom, I think are all things that are particularly unique for Gen Z. I designed her with a pretty strong hourglass since that's the body type we're sort of being sold right now. And colored hair is kind of a must because I feel like there's never been a generation previous where having unnaturally dyed hair is such a casual and common choice to make. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean you're like aggressively counterculture or you're trying to say something dramatic about your place in society. A lot of people just change their hair nowadays because it seems fun and they think the color might suit them, which I think is really cool. Uh, I also put cat ears on her, not necessarily because everyone in Gen Z is running around with cat ears on, but sort of symbolize the fact that uh, Gen Z, due to their um, constant ability to get on the internet and sort of be more like global citizens in that way, uh, like anime hit the mainstream, K-pop hit the mainstream, uh, there's just a lot of like Asian influence into the fashion and pop culture that uh, Gen Z likes to consume. Um, and of course I had to draw this character with a smartphone in hand because that is one of the major things that makes Gen Z different from other generations. The constant and immediate ability to get online to connect with other people. I also put a little burning earth on the case of this character's phone, primarily just because I feel like Gen Z has grown up kind of feeling constantly haunted by the threat of apocalypse, uh, whether it's like school shootings or, you know, climate change or any other, you know, list of, um, uh, things that are really especially hyped up on social media to be extra terrifying has really changed the way that Gen Z people have to like think about their futures. Um, it's inspired a lot of like nihilism, I think, but also a lot of activism. And I definitely think it's going to make this generation pretty hardy. Obviously, every generation has its struggles, but I think Gen Z has really had to grow up with the constant awareness of every problem in the world. Um, and that's going to change their thinking a lot. Next up, my character for the Millennials. Now, um, the birth dates for Millennials are 1980 to 1990 something. It can go 1993, 1995, 1997. Again, that line is particularly blurry right now. I'm not sure why. Um, but Millennials are basically determined by um, their ability to use technology um, because it came to them at a young enough age that there were still, you know, it was easier for them to learn. Um, um, however, they still remember a time before a lot of the technologies that are so commonplace now, like before those existed. Um, so they might have grown up with dial up, they might have even grown up, you know, without a cell phone, depending on what sort of end of the millennial spectrum that they're on. Um, and as for this character's clothes, I had to feature the scene emo trends of the time. Body type could not be more different than it is now as for what was considered the female ideal. Uh, a good example of this is taking a look at Paris Hilton, whose physique and fashion was considered to be very cool at the time. She was very, very thin um, and she wore super low rise jeans, which were a huge trend. Um, and if you watch uh, her assistant, Kim Kardashian um, and how she sort of transformed between these two generations, I think it really shows uh, how much the ideals have changed. So millennials grew up in a time when basically all the economic prosperity that their parents had sort of been promised um, kind of dried up. Uh, they grew up in a recession. So basically all of them kind of expected that they weren't gonna be able to get jobs. So I'm making this character look a little bit more shy and reserved, also because this sort of mimics some of the poses that were popular on MySpace. Everyone was trying to look real shy. 
Millennials were the first generation to really be just completely steamrolled by student debt. Um, previously, obviously, college was expensive, but this was the first generation where college seemed A, completely mandatory, and B, insanely expensive, like so much so that there's no way you could work at a grocery store and pay off your student loans. Around this time, a lot of childhood things like Harry Potter and certain cartoons, nostalgia in general, became super popular. And for the first time, geek and nerd culture become sort of their own subculture. They become almost sort of cool rather than something that some Stephen King bully is going to throw you in a locker for. Um, it becomes its own little niche, uh, which will eventually grow and grow and really affect uh, the things that are popular for Generation Z. Um, this is also during the millennials like teen coming of age years when internet culture is born. Next up is Gen X. Um, Gen X is considered the time period where people are born between around 1965-ish to around 1980. This period is also known as the baby bust in uh, comparison to the baby boom, partially perhaps because the birth control pill um, became accessible in the 60s and as a result in this time period there were a lot less babies being born. Um, the economy was also doing pretty well for like the average person. Um, middle class people had enough money to like buy all the new gadgets and um, people could go to college and it would almost always like pay off. People weren't going into huge debt and going to college almost guaranteed a decent job. I think it's this cultural difference which is why a lot of like Gen Z and Millennials parents will tell them to just like go knock on the door of the CEO of the job that they want or like show up and ask for a job in person stuff that will get you escorted off the premises nowadays just because back in their day that would have worked. So I drew this character with this kind of big, bright, um, optimistic energy. I wanted to capture the energy of both like the MTV era as well as that like 80s sort of jovialness. Um, this would be in the earlier part of the Gen Xers um, sort of teen years because as soon as the 90s hit, uh, grunge and sort of like cynicism and apathy uh, became the thing to be <laughs> for teenagers. Gen Xers had a few big societal problems that they grew up around. The total lack of response for the people in America who were suffering with AIDS, um, as well as the war on drugs, were really both ways to keep um, undesirable communities down and suffering in the US. So there was definitely a significant dark side um, to the fun and bubbly culture that Gen Xers got to enjoy at this time. This was the era where people finally figured Figured out that like hitchhiking was dangerous and that there's like predators out there so it was kind of the last generation where kids were allowed to just like take their bike out and just like have their own adventures and just come back when it got dark um, that really didn't happen after this point and nowadays I think you can literally like get charged with neglect if you just let your young children run around all day without you this was also the generation that first got to sort of experience the home computer as well Okay, time for the boomers. Boomers are born between 1946 and around 1964, which means that boomers are really growing up and becoming teens and adults around the 60s and 70s, which I find really fascinating because with the reputation that boomers have now, um, it's really surprising to think about the fact that during their youth, they were really known, their whole generation was known for being a generation of protesters. They protested along the civil rights movement, they protested against the Vietnam War, um, there was a whole sexual revolution that was happening, uh, you know, people were throwing off their like religions they were raised with and like experimenting with Eastern religions or New Age religions, just trying to like basically shake up every aspect of like traditional society that uh, was expected of them by their parents and their 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 culture. Um, everything was sort of being turned upside down, and I think that that's really fascinating. I went for a pretty classic hippie design for this character and I wanted to add in lots of little details to sort of allude to the stuff that was going on at this time. I gave her a little moon necklace um, because this was when we first put uh, people on the moon, which is very exciting of course and a huge 
um, huge scientific achievement. Um, and I also gave her a little peace symbol on her belt um, because, you know, the, the protest against the Vietnam War calls for to stop the violence and that type of thing. Um, I gave her very long natural hair and, uh, you know, two little earrings with the female symbol on them. Um, all things just trying to allude to the fact that, like, everything was changing and the youth were basically demanding a world that was more in line with uh, what they personally wanted to see happen. Um, they wanted to shake off tradition and rebel and um, see, see positive change in the world through all kinds of um, protests. The ideal body type at this time, uh, as far as I can tell from the most popular supermodel of the time, Twiggy, um, was basically just like a long and lanky and slim sort of figure and um she has these like big expressive doll like eyes which i think that type of makeup was really popular at the time as well so i tried to do sort of those big um open round sort of eyes as well for this character honestly i kind of love seeing them all together like this they kind of look like a really quirky friend group this video was sponsored by squarespace if you're part of today's generation, you know that a portfolio website is an absolute must for any artist, and Squarespace makes it easy to host all your images on a beautiful portfolio website. It's really easy and intuitive to just pick up and start putting all of the stuff you want into your website. It'll automatically fit your pictures together in an aesthetically pleasing way, so you don't have to spend tons and tons of time carefully moving them around pixel by pixel. You can even make a password protected page on your site if you need to share your work privately with like clients or commissioners or anything like that. It's nice that you can also really easily put content onto your site from other places like Twitter or Instagram, especially if those were the places you were already kind of hosting your stuff. It makes the whole transition from social media only to having a portfolio site a lot smoother. Check out squarespace.com for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch your new site, go to squarespace.com slash lavendertown to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Good luck with your portfolios, everyone, and thank you to Squarespace for supporting my channel. I hope you guys enjoyed watching me turn generations into character designs. Let me know how I did um, and which generation you feel like fits you best, even if it's not technically the one that you're in. I will see you in the next video and I hope you have a nice day. Thank you so much to my patrons, including Munch Munch McGee, Jess Frenick, Dude What, Matilda Minchin, Golden Castles, Azarag Clausel, Snoodles, Al Kappa, Winkus Wonkus, Aki, Blue, Zero Expectations, Wulu Luna, Lilia Lurd, Hazel Tiffia, Elizabeth Ward, The Expressive Poker Face, Morrissey Axolotl, Chris Draw, Subaki, Juliana Davis, Yume Lily, Snow White, The Becky, Liliana Hammond, Mia Lavalie, Angel File, Q Musgrove, Nicole Ludwak, Nicolette Queen, Rainwater Pearls, Ice Cream Pal, Best Kaiju, Lion, Storm Scribbles, Tom David Johansson, Yvonne Rodriguez, Larry Louie, Nora Cornelson, Joseph Copel, Colin Lariano, Dr. Casket, Your Boy ST, JJ Jade, and of course, Libla Libla.